Computer games. What are they to you? You see them as violent, addictive, perhaps antisocial. To me, games are a way to teach you about consequences, to make you take responsibility. Games allow you to explore deep subjects and emotions. They can teach you to collaborate and allow you to bond with others. To us game developers, games are a cultural force, impactful, powerful. We allow you to interact. Where a documentary about someone suffering can invoke sympathy, a good game can create empathy. It's because you are there, this is happening to you. Distancing yourself becomes more difficult because it is your responsibility to drive the game. Your actions have consequence in the universe of the game. I want to introduce you to someone. This is Karin. She's seven years old and you live together in a home in Norway. She likes to draw, to play with the ball that she got from a good friend. She's smart, creative, and caring. In this universe, you provide for Karin. You're a single parent trying to make ends meet, while at the same time being able to spend time with your daughter. In the game, you can do different activities, such as cooking together, having a meal, going on grand adventures, comforting her when she's feeling down. It's not always easy, but she tries really hard to be happy and brave. After all, she sees that you're working really hard. She wants to help. We work on creating a happy life together. Deep down, Cotton knows that something isn't right. She knows that She's different, different somehow. But that doesn't matter because she's a big girl and she's just about to start school. She'll be able to go out into the world, get new friends, and be a normal kid. You know already that this is not going to be easy. Because Cotton is not just any normal girl. She's your adopted daughter cast away by her family because she was a symbol of shame. She was a symbol of treason. Cotton's mother was a Norwegian woman who during the Second World War had a child with a German soldier. This child, Cotton, is a Lebensborn child, a Nazi child. Immediately after starting school, Cotton begins to feel the hatred that society has for her. She comes home discouraged. What do you do? Do you try to gloss over it in the hopes that things will get better? Just give them some time to get to know you. But things will not improve. They will escalate. And soon little Cotton will have to understand what is happening to her. What is she and why do people hate her? Who are my real parents? What is a Nazi kid? How much do you share? What kind of explanations can you have for the hatred and anger of others? As a parent, it is your responsibility to decide how to handle these situations. You tell her, don't listen to these people. It's us against them. They're ignorant and you shouldn't trust any of them. 
Or do you tell her that there's always hope? Kindness will win in the end. Just smile at the world and the world will smile back. The choices you make will affect her, her views on herself and the world. My Child Lemon's Born is a mobile game. It's a parent simulation telling the stories of the Lebensborn born children, born of Norwegian women and German soldiers during the Second World War. It is part of Norwegian history that is mostly untold, about how we treated our own children because of their genes. We wanted to tell their stories and to help create empathy for the Lebensborn born children these children born of war. We wanted to get their message out that no child should inherit the sins of their parents. It was not an easy task. We had to be true to their stories and we had to go into some dark topics that I have not really seen tackled in the game's medium before. There were three main reasons why we decided to do this with the game. With a game, we can reach a different, broader audience. The game started out as a small, curious thing, but has grown to become an important part of our culture. Games have become another important medium that help people define the world. And the medium is growing. Being digital and universal makes games have a broader global reach. Secondly, to use the power of interaction to create empathy and understanding. I believe that a common humanity unites us across borders. And we see through many different games that we can use this medium to work through many different untold dark stories and hidden mental pain. We can shed light towards our common struggles and use games as a tools for healing. Lastly, it is simply the medium that we wish to use to express, express ourselves. Many game developers are artists and games are our artistic expression. We combine graphics, music, storytelling and your participation in telling our ideas. Our goal was to take you through an emotional journey with this child. For us to do that, the child had to be in the center. After all, it is her, not you, that goes through the stigma, bullying and hardships. We created a child with emotions and worldviews. This is a game but we didn't really want to use traditional gamification systems. We didn't want to tell you what she felt and believed through numbers and statistics. I mean, it is all there. There's a lot of it. But we wanted to hide it inside of the child so that the only way you can really see it is through body language, speech, and actions. Karin has many feelings. We have to pay attention. Maybe you notice something is wrong one evening as she uncharacteristically goes to sleep without asking for a bedtime story. Or in the morning, the smile that you're usually seeing is more straightened than usual. And then you find her drawing. Cotton's feelings will not always be apparent. She's a child. She wants to protect you from her pain. Of course she does. She cares about you. We did a lot of research. Spearheaded by Elin Feste and the production company Technopilot, who have been co-producing the documentary Wars Don't End about the Lebensborn. This work was incredibly important for our game. 
because Ellen got to talk directly to the Lebensborn children about their experiences. And she managed to get their opinions on what we were doing with our game. We also looked into child psychology, different parenting styles, how children express themselves through drawings, especially through difficult times. And we watched documentaries about adopted children. Working with all this material was inspiring and heartbreaking. The game begins in a place where many can feel familiar, with bullying and alienation. I also drew from my own experiences being bullied growing up, and I think that really helped with the development of the game. When I was young, I would rationalize and think about how I would be able to handle everything on my own, and find every small little victory. I actually remember coming home after being beaten, victorious, because I felt like I had managed to do something different. Ha, stupid bullies, it barely even hurt this time. Children have many ways of coping. Going darker, the game addresses the very real and current situation of the Lebensborn. Then, towards the unspeakable. When we decided to make this game, we agreed that we would not hold back. We would tell the horrific story in full. But as we were working, we realized that we weren't really equipped to deal with this. We couldn't wrap our heads around some of the horrible things that happened to these children and how the world could just keep continuing as if nothing had happened. How could a child continue living with this type of pain? We realized that we wouldn't be able to do this on our own. So we got some help from someone who had in-depth experience within the topic of child abuse. Elirig has experienced abuse herself as a child. She's a Norwegian writer who has written the book, I Know That It Is Possible To Become Truly Happy Again. The talk I had with her completely changed our perspectives and helped us through a really difficult part of the game. Naturally, this is an incredibly difficult subject to work with, especially in a sensitive way. How can you manage that? One of the methods we used to tackle this was to make sure that everything that happened would be indirectly hinted at. because the truth was too horrifying to tell directly. That is why the unspeakable remains unspoken and is something that adoptive parents of Karim can only sense with the utmost dread. It is possible to become truly happy again. This game is about caring. It's about being there for the child no matter what happens. And without you, she probably wouldn't survive. In the end, we were blown away by how powerful this game would be to those who played it. I didn't anticipate how many different people would react in different ways. We had many people sharing with us their stories. A teenager from Japan telling us that he was made to feel worthless. An American woman talking to us about how she could recognize the pain and confusion of being adopted. A British father who shared how he had to move his family because he couldn't stop the horrific bullying that was happening to his daughter at school. A Croatian Serb feeling torn between two tribes. We find it eye-opening to see the care that people had for these children across cultures. In Japan, the element of bullying was the most prevalent. In China, it was a strong parental emotion and of caring for a child. In South Korea, it was the similarities to their own dark history of the comfort women. 
One of my favorite user reviews is from China. As a 20-year-old male, I never thought I would know the feeling of being a father. All I can hope for is that my beloved daughter, Karin, can live a happy life. People see this child as their own, and they want to care for it. I believe that this talk has barely scratched the surface. To really understand the depth and diversity of games, you have to take part. Play a game. Play several games that explore important topics. Maybe try. I know it might not be what all of you here would feel comfortable with, but I really believe that it would give a new opportunity to grow and to learn about this medium. Games are a cultural force. They are impactful and powerful. We allow people to experience another place in time, to reach across cultures and share our humanity. There are so many amazing games out there that really make you think and feel in different ways, so try one. Because I believe that games can make real impact in our world, and we're only getting started. Thank you.